So for those of you who are watching on television, we have a relatively modest agenda tonight, but a lot has to do with reviewing documents that we intend to bring forward to um, town meeting and also uh, for a public hearing uh, on, a on April 1st and also reviewing um, master plan issues of who would be on the committee and a couple of other. But. So uh, we have no appearances tonight. So on old business, proposed zoning amendments for May 2015 annual town meeting, preparation for public hearing. The items are site plan review regulations um, and um, Oh, wait, we have other issues, too, though. There are just other changes that were made. Um, yeah, it's actually for... Okay, um, right, sorry. It's, uh, the, accessory it's uh, the accessory apartments. apartments. And definitions and Thanks. language change. Thanks, okay. So the, the issues are the uh, accessory apartments, and I'm curious if the board members have read this over again, and do they have any comments on it? I've read it and no comment. John? No, I'm happy. As am I. I am too, and I, I guess my question was, um, in preparing for the uh, meeting, I, I went through and tried to compare this to the original document, and uh, there's really small changes here and there, except for at the end when we did add substantial amount of new, new information. Is that something we can just print in red and just show the additions and deletions, and that would be a nice way to present it at the public hearing? Um. We could do that. Um, yeah, I was wondering whether we might want to do a PowerPoint and just kind of bullet things that were changed, like once two sections or three sections actually were reorganized, and then there were changes in language. Um, yeah. As I was going through it, I, I had a difficult time conceptualizing what that PowerPoint would be, but maybe you and I should sit down and, and figure out if, if that's something that makes sense. Do you want to do a think a PowerPoint makes sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, if that's the case, then um, I'll, I'll sit down with you, Martha, and we'll s see if we can figure out a, a PowerPoint then for the accessory <coughs> apartments and also the language changes. The language changes are pretty, straightforward. pretty straightforward yeah. and nothing, uh, nothing extensive. And we could also have a handout as well. And I think we should have a hand. Well, we should hand out the, the well, the documents that you prepared for us, which really is this. And then the, the, the three sub items I thought was really excellent. So maybe we should just do that. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Okay. And that's um, the uh, first legal ad was in the paper yesterday. So it was yesterday and next Tuesday. And um, copies of the proposed amendments are in my office and at the town clerk. Okay. For anybody who wants to come in and see them in the meantime. Okay, and that, um, just for the audience, that's 8.15 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday, April the 1st. At 7.15, we will have another public hearing on the Triton School. What are we going to have on the 1st? I can't hear you, John. April 1st. Yes. We have two public hearings. Yep. The first at 7.15 is the Triton uh, right. School. And at uh, 8.15 is the uh, annual town meeting issues that we just reviewed. Okay, thank okay. you. And um, regarding the Triton project, <coughs> I do have You've got you've got your copy, right? Of, of what? The, of the Triton project. I have a, a, a right, whole full it. set of drawings. Right. Yes. And I have <coughs> copies for the other board members um, for review before the public hearing. So those are here, and don't don't leave without them. When do we expect to hear from Joe? Do we know? Um, well, that's the other piece of information for the rest of the board. Um, John reviewed the project, um, and Doug and I, and we're all in agreement that having engineering review would be beneficial. Um, so we have contracted with Joe Sirwatka, and he, he is going to have comments to us before the first. <coughs> uh, before then, yeah. but not in time for them to work up a response. Um, we'll see. I mean, his, turn, his turnaround is, 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 good, is very yeah. good. So, yeah. um, you know, as soon as I have them, I'll pass them on. That's the word out, yeah. Okay. Uh, it would be, by the way, it'd be, we really don't want to get them on the first. I mean, no, I, I, no, admittedly, we we'll probably carry the public hearing forward, but right. it'd be nice right. if we could have them beforehand and you can then comment on them. Right. And the CONCOM actually um, continued it to their April 21st. Oh, really? Yes, oh, so there okay. was a notice coming yeah, out of it last they night. They weren't there either. Oh, okay. Okay, so. Yeah, I think they had asked right, to be continued. They asked for a continuance, yeah. yes. <coughs> okay. 
So on this issue of the preparation for public hearing, do we need to vote on this? Or we just kind of no, said what we're doing, no, okay? I think, yeah. All right. Okay, regarding the site plan review regulations, the review of the draft. Now, George has sent over to Martha a list of things as I'm looking at them now. Have you incorporated them yet, or should we no, go over them? No, I, I wanted the board to talk about them. So here's a com these are um, George's comments. And um, I have. So here's a copy of the document itself if anybody needs one. And well, why don't we then? And I also have a couple of comments from Richard. Okay. Which I think he Thank may you. have passed out. So I, um, let's talk about page one, and we'll talk about George's comments, and I had a comment as well. Um, so page 1A, under submission requirements, where does the applicant designate an authorized representative within the application? And My point was maybe he, doesn't, he doesn't do it here, but is it done in the application? And the, the reason why the question came up, there is a reference to an authorized representative on paragraph six, uh, line six, uh, later on in the document. It is, it is in the <coughs> application if- It if is? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I had suggested striking that one reference out of the document, and that's further on down the page. All right. <coughs> so does it need to be stricken? No. Yes? Uh, on page six, paragraph oh, six- Oh, page six, six when we get to there, okay. So on page one, I just had a comment, Martha, um, that we reference that the application comes to you and the building inspector, and I think it's the building commissioner. Yes, it is building commissioner. Yep. Okay, and uh, and we, you'll just go through the document. You'll see you have that three or four times throughout. So just make yep. those changes accordingly. Yep. Okay. Page two. <coughs> um, Deposit of consultant review, okay. Um, suggest a change if the board decides in its sole discretion the consultant review is necessary, the applicant. Um, now, what, where is the, what line is that? Are you? That's B, right B here. Two. B2, it says Deposit at the discretion of the board, period. Okay. If the board decides consultant review is necessary, just change the structure to sure. make it at the board's discretion and cleaned it up. Everybody okay with that language? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Um, anything else on page two? No. I do have a comment on two. Page two, four. Two, is it page two, four? Fourth line, add a comma after, oh, that's fine if those are just clean up. Page two, four, A, five, add S after both building and addition. Right. Right? Yes. Size of proposed building, uh, paren, yeah, S, an addition, one building S. Or more than Fine. One addition. Okay. So that's okay. Uh, now, just before we go off of this, this is just a small issue, Martha, but in the project description, it seems that before we ask them to do analysis of traffic trips and town water and sewer, in other words, I think that it should be number one, and then you should go to number five, the size of the proposed building. Okay, yeah. Do you yes. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then take two, three, and four and put them after 11. Okay, it's just a small reordering of, just in terms of what, what, what the priorities are. And whereas on the top of page three, we're pretty clear that we want 16 copies of the site plan, how many copies of the narrative do we want? Um, I, well, it's helpful to have as many, the same number of copies. So you want 16? Yeah. Okay, so I think you need to add that because I, I think it's moot on that point. Okay. Okay. All right. What we don't need is 16 copies of the stormwater analysis. Right. Okay. Because only John understands that anyway. Not always. No. Page 3. B3. Yeah, that was another question I had from Martha that, I think in the application there'll be a reference to the title deeds, Martha. And it really doesn't have to show up here. This, this is dealing with easements, rights of way, and covenants. But there's no reference anywhere to the actual title deeds. Um, or we don't ask them to provide the title deeds. We have the deed information in the assessors. 
Okay, so we take it that way. Okay. So if, if that's Borrego did provide it, I know, yeah. in their document. The engineers will frequently provide it on the drawing. The deed references, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's just yeah. kind of normal yeah. practice that right. just happens. Right. Okay. They don't have to, but they do. So we're okay with? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Page B8, which is the location of wetlands proposed, wetland replication areas. So what is the? This is the eight-inch caliber versus the six. We have right. typically used six. Yeah, I think we should stick with the standard <coughs> six. I think we use six. six. Or change it to eight, one or the other. No, I think it's good. It's so often, it's used throughout. Almost all the documents has six, six inch. Yep. Six is normal. Um, page six, four. I got an issue back from oh, okay. four, or do we want to? No, 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 I don't think so. It. Okay. Originally, my recollection was that we had agreed the drawing requirements would be the all reference back to the stormwater. So we had, because, you know, from my own experience, it drives you crazy trying to search all the documents to be sure you've got the right drawing requirements, because if you got three drawings, <coughs> with, well, three three documents, you're going to have three sets of drawing requirements. And I thought that was agreed at the time, but uh, it was then decided not to do that and let this one stand on its own. Subdivision rules or regs, we did manage to get the stormwater requirements as the base and add the subdivision things, the property things, um, as required. But here we've got the worst of both worlds. We, had, we have what I had originally said, and then we have... Uh, the contradiction, so to speak. Um, information provided <coughs> shall be in conformance with the submission requirements of Newbury Stormwater Rules and Regs, which I don't think we really want to say per se because we've already given the submission requirements in that document, that part of the document right. we're reviewing now. Um, I do think we ought to make reference not as a source of information but as the rules to the stormwater regs, and that thou shalt do it according with, accordance with the stormwater regs. And I don't think we quite say that. Okay. We say, we, we reference the bylaw, chapter 87, as the rules, <coughs> we, as, as something that must be followed, but we don't talk about the rules and regs. Mm -hmm. So what language do we, we want to put forward and what do we want to take out? I would add, uh, after Chapter 87 of the Code of the Town of Newbury, mm -hmm. I would insert before Mass DEP, uh, Town of Newbury Stormwater Rules uh, Regulations. Um, well, there's a name for it. Stormwater Management and Illicit Discharge, I think is the... And Erosion Control. And Erosion Control, yeah. It's, uh, okay. Okay. Far too long. And then I would scrub... Um, Information sh The provided. last four lines. Yeah, yeah. okay, got it. We end up with the same size paragraph, roughly, but... Okay. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in architectural drawings, it's not always applicable. Do we want to say if applicable? I would mm -hmm. certainly think so. Because we don't always need architectural drawings. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. And then... On the again, in terms of imp, uh, importance, uh, on the bottom of the page six for level two projects, we may ask for traffic impact assessments, environmental and community and fiscal impact assessments. I would reverse those and say the fiscal impact assessments are number one, and environmental are number two, and traffic are number three. In terms of our town, mm -hmm. in terms of what are what's important. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. John, anything else? No. Elizabeth? No. Okay. I, but I think then we, uh, well, I have three ins building inspectors on five, just so that's where I found them. Okay. Then on six. Uh, page six, five. <coughs> I had one of the six for the respective <coughs> advisory views. Okay. Right. 
And okay. above that on uh, page six, paragraph four, line three, there's a word may about halfway through and after that, in its sole discretion, added after may, just to reinforce that it is discretionary. Where, where is that? Uh, there's a may right here, red line, I think. Okay, yeah, may. May. In its sole discretion. In its sole discretion. Okay. Bear with us. Sorry. Come on up and help. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Um, May. Police chief. We can do that. Auth page 6 6. Authorized representative. Yeah, this would strike out authorized representative because that's the only place in the document where it appears. I mean, the applicant. And it's authorized representative to do all kinds of things within the document. Just to keep it to the applicant. So what line is that on? So I, do, I see it. I got it. Thank you. Everybody see that it's on. Okay. And then page six, seven, yeah, fifth uh, line. And yeah, where it says certified mail return receipt, that should be certified mail return <coughs> receipt requested. <coughs> That's the truth. Okay. Page seven. Um, top of her fifth line after applicant. Applicant. Change at his or her. Oh, to the applicant's soul. Okay. So Instead of his or her. Yeah. At the applicant's. Everybody got that? His or her will go strike out his or strike her. Strike that out because it could be an it somewhere there, corporation. Could be an it. Sixth line, same document, same, yeah. Receipt and requested. Change the same caps thing. on certified mail return to lowercase and, okay. Okay. Wait, it is lowercase. Isn't it? And one it is and one it isn't. A certified list of abutters. Is that what you're referencing? No, this is caps. It's certified mail. It's oh, this caps. one. Okay. And the one before is lowercase. Okay. okay. I got you. I'm on the wrong line. Thanks. Ninth line, which is to be consistent with prior applicant expen expense requirement references change at the expense of the applicant to at the applicant's sole expense. Okay. Martha, you got that? Yep. And page seven, nine, nine, fourth line. Okay, bylaw. That's their bylaw. That shows up all over the place now. Uh, <coughs> okay. Planning board. I'm not sure how do we do it. Or do we refer to ourselves as board or planning board? It should be planning board. Yeah, <coughs> what I've done is if, if the planning board already shows up in the sentence, then I may have used just board the second time. The second time. time. Yeah, I right. think that's fine. That's good. And it's throughout the document, <coughs> applicant <coughs> may be capitalized or it might have lowercase at the beginning of the word. Right. Yeah, and I, and I, yeah, generally I try to do it uppercase. But yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Should we change it because yeah, it's in and out all over the place. Way, yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. John? I got a nitpick on the first sheet. Building inspector. I think Sam's title is yeah, building yeah. commissioner, yeah. is it yeah. not? Yeah, we, we've got Is that, that taken care of? We, we got it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then there were the two comments from um, Richard, um, which I passed down. Do you all have copies? No, I don't. Right. Where are we? Oh, Richard's sick, yeah. It's a very small print. Um, <clears throat> his first suggestion was adding on page three, item three, um, something to the effect the ex showing the extent and defined locations of all proposed public-private walking trails should be provided. I'm not well, so sure about that. I'm not that. sure because we don't always get walking trails. Right. Typically we don't in a site no, plan review. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. And, and the other thing is the site plan review is frequently for <coughs> a commercial operation. Right. I'm not sure we well, want all the, people look at, randomly look hiking at all through there. Everyone we've just done, I mean, was on, on Route 1. We're going two, three, four of them. Right. So, and then the other one will be, now we might have a trail at Triton. I don't know, but I don't see it on the plans, actually. It isn't on the plan. I, I, 
I don't recall if that yeah. part of the trail is still yeah, alive. I, I, I don't think it's applicable. You know, I think if for subdivision, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that, that's where you live. But people work. And <clears throat> if we have an industrial site, the last thing they would want is to people wandering through. Page 3, item 16. Location of existing and proposed utilities, including existing and proposed septic systems and sanitary tour. And if something to the effect, if public utilities are to be used, estimate expected usage and verify that this proposed usage is available. I think, I think the second part makes sense, yeah. and that is to verify that the proposed usage is, is, is available. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we can estimate the usage. Although we, we, kind of, we kind of mm. have that already in uh, on page two under A, what we've moved down the projected town water and sewer demand, and it's something that needs to be addressed. Well, I think these referencing isn't this electricity uh, yeah. or gas? Yeah, I was thinking more it might have been water or sewer, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, 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 <coughs> I'm not sure that we really care about that, do we? Isn't that between the applicant and the power and national grid for? Other utilities? I would think. I yeah. mean, that's not really town utility. Uh, that's no, not it, it, infrastructure. That's yeah. I mean, where it becomes relevant is if there's alternate energy being used and that they have, in fact, tied into that system. And again, we could say yeah. if applicable. That, that's the only thing I would say on that. Otherwise, I would say no. Yeah, I don't see that. I think water, yes. Yeah. That would be. Because we always water is available. Always right. get to make people get a letter from the wa applicable water department. Right, if they're tying into yeah. it. Yeah. And okay. Sewage is such a tiny area. We're not going to likely to have site plan review. <coughs> sewer area. Where, where, where is sewer? where is the sewer? Where is what? Where, where do people have sewer? Right behind us. Oh, yeah. oh in, yeah, in, in these guys. Park is mostly yeah. sewer. Not all. No, they, I, no they actually they don't. No, they don't. Don't no. they have any? No. There, oh, I think there are just, just a couple Rolf's of houses Lane? that have tied, tied in Rolf's Lane and then Plum Island. Yeah. Of oh, of course, Plum, yeah, Island. Plum Island. Okay. And that's it. Right. Okay. There's, there's nothing in the park, huh? They had yeah. the option to do that some years ago, and they voted it down. Really? Okay. I thought there was. I know there's a lot of septic systems in the park, but I thought that yeah. there was some sewer. Yeah, just a couple. As far as I know, just a few connections. Oh, okay. Okay. My bad. All right. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll agree with this that we need to have it if it's water, but not for the other elements. Okay. Anybody else have any other comments on site plan review? Um, I think what's interesting for me to go back over this because we actually, you know, passed this last year at town me town meeting. I mean, we passed the the bylaw, the bylaw. Right. and um, and so I think that the submission requirements. There was a point in time when I thought that perhaps. They were we uh, were asking too much for a level one, and as a po but I don't know how you differentiate. To be honest, I think that you'd have to ask for the, the same level, yeah, of, of and, and in terms of the site plan and the narrative. Yeah, and then they can ask for yeah, waivers. Yeah, then they can ask for a waiver if they think it's onerous. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Okay, John, you okay? I'm good. Elizabeth, I am. It was very All right. educational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the master plan, um, just a quick update on where we are at the RFP. Uh, town attorney has opined that we have some additional obligations in terms of the document that we're sending out, and that's taken a little bit longer than we expected. And so the RFP has not yet gone out. Okay. Um, but it's to make sure that when it does go out, it's legal. So um, we're, well, Martha is working on that. <laughs> And uh, actually, one of the uh, one of the sessions I'm going <coughs> to attend at the CPTC conference on Saturday is on writing and managing RFPs. Oh, is that the one in, in is that in Worcester? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's not snowing. Oh, it will. It, <laughs> it, 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 I think it will be. I think it will be. You're right. I think it will be. And um, although I don't know, it's, it, it's we're past projecting what's going to happen. But they said it was supposed to be mostly a southerly storm. So what uh, we had talked about last time was, well, who would make up the master plan committee? And um, so what 
Martha has put together here is for our consideration uh, the following, that all members of the planning board are members. The town planner is a member, one to two members of the board of selectmen, one member of the finance committee, one member of the capital planning committee, and four to five residents, people at large, who would have an interest in becoming part of the committee. And then that we would have subcommittees that would have on them as appropriate the town administrator, the building commissioner, the conservation agent, the police chief, the fire chief, the DPW, and members of those committees, open space, historic, agricultural, school committee, council on aging, library, et cetera. So does that hit anybody in any particular way of any interest or any comments on this? And uh, because I think that what we want to do is that once the RFP goes out, we need to start soliciting interest in oh, from, the, from the community yeah. to make sure that people are interested. I in have a problem with all members of the planning board um, simply because um, all those under 70, please raise their hand. You know, <laughs> I don't think uh, four septuagenarians thrown into the mix as obligatory members is terribly useful. Um, I don't think any of the four of us, well, three, four. Four, yeah, um, we're all over seventy. Except um, for Elizabeth, I, I don't expect to be alive for the next uh, <laughs> update on this thing. I'm sure you three guys will be. I but, do. <laughs> um, I would be inclined to open it up and take maybe two members of the planning board, and then take the other three slots and put them in the general selection. Sure. Uh, the, the general there was group. only one rationale of why all the town, all the planning board members were included, and that was because we had three relatively new members mm -hmm. and thought that it would be they can go to the meetings. a good process. There's That's no all. reason why any planning board yep. member can't go, mm -hmm. but to be part of the decision-making process, I would suggest mm -hmm. that we have the average sure. age somewhere under... 63, you know. If I, I just uh, to play devil's advocate here, um, under Mass General Law, the planning board is responsible for the master plan. Right. So, you know, I think there is a rationale also to have all the members of the planning board involved, yeah. you know, at, at a yeah. committee no. level. Sure. Uh, when we did it before, Mass General Laws may have well have changed. Uh, we had a committee that, uh, again, the planning board was kind of hovering over, <coughs> keeping an eye on us, but it was basically us and the consultant. Well, when we did the 2006 one, um, the master plan committee meetings were the first hour of the planning board meetings, once, okay. and it was the entire board plus yeah. the committee members. Sure. And um, so I think there, you know, there are different there's ways of doing it. There's an argument on both sides. Yeah, I, think I do an understand argument on both that. Sides. But um, we're very heavily weighted towards either elected officials or town employees. And although most of us live here, well, Sam, I don't believe He's does. He's the committee. And building commissioner, Sam doesn't even live in Newbury. And I'm not sure he has a great deal of input. He may in some, in some areas, but um, I'm not sure if you don't live here that that's terribly appropriate. But I see a lack of youth. I think Plum Island should be reg uh, represented more than it is. I mean, the planning board, we got three Old Town, two Byfield. Hmm? Three uh, Old Town, two Byfield. Enclaves in Byfield yet, of sorts. Right. And nobody from Plum Island. Well, I think in, in picking up people from the general public, we ought to have all areas of the town covered. Yes. Not just everybody from the same place. That's right. Right. <laughs> about. So we have and I, I think we should have... Um, a mix of old residents, first families, and people that just got here. Uh, again, that's and that's the challenge. That is that's a challenge. a challenge, trying to get young, yeah. young, young. Sure. Just, but let's. Um, so, uh, your thoughts on this? I just gave it. I think it's fine. The way it is. Yep. We we'll just go ahead and start putting it together. We may have other suggestions as we go along, or other thoughts. And my thought would be that perhaps we could be willing to be flexible and see how, how much interest we get from the public mm -hmm. because uh, we may not find a large number of people who are interested in making that level of time commitment. Yeah. Um, so the presence of all five members may be needed. 
Um, but if there is a, and I hope there is, a strong showing of interest, um, and then if there is, then maybe we can react to that to keep and it just move rate. Just move away yeah. Yeah. accordingly. <laughs> That's an interesting idea. Um, anybody in the audience have a comment or would like to address this issue? Not at this time. Uh, since we're on television, I guess I'm making a plea. Uh, one of the things I found interesting was that when I got my paper signed, yes, uh, uh, of the 35 or 40 people I, I talked to, about eight watched this Good. on a regular I basis. Like that. So that's why I am saying, uh, for those who are watching, if you have an interest in being part of a master plan committee, please contact Martha at 978 what's your number? 465 465 0862 extension 312 that's 978 465 0862 extension 312 and that's Martha Taylor who's the town planner so we really look forward to hopefully there's some people out there who would like to join us um, and uh, and if you don't if you know someone um, it's the only criteria is that you live in Newbury. Um, you don't have to be an expert in anything. You have to be an expert in caring about the town. That's the most important thing. And I would throw in that uh, from having been on quite a few planning, general plan committee, uh, master plan committees, um, <clears throat> that sort of activity is a great deal more interesting than the day-to-day -day thing that you see us doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, planning board activities usually are not really gripping. I'm not surprised that we're not primetime TV. But it is a lot of fun dealing with the master plan. It is. It is a lot of fun. Okay. So we will move forward. We have to get the RFP out. It'll be sent out to all of you as soon as we get the final okay from Ginny. Ginny uh, is our legal counsel and then we'll move forward um, so we're a bit behind on this but I think it'll be done right um, so, so these are the three people we're going to no 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 oh, this, um, those were three that we had discussed before right. um, so it will be advertised more broadly okay it's going to go in the central into the, into the central register yeah okay and, and so anybody who has an interest in it uh, will respond Anything further on this? Hmm? How has word gotten out to the people and the public who want to come in and, and participate? You've just gone on television for some. Oh, we'll put a we'll put something in the paper. Paper, notices, and we'll put a press release. Something we'll do website. notices in the libraries yeah. are important because I mean a lot of people go to the libraries, they do. and um, they'll see them yeah. there. And those, anyway, they participate. I think maybe in the schools too. I think that's a good idea in the schools. How do we get to the It wouldn't like hurt to have a high school, school like kid that. on the committee. Yeah. Actually. Sure. No, it would be great to have students. Yeah. There's actually we, a blackboard. The, the schools have a way of communicating by way of email, and they basically. Yeah, there's send a one out way a burst you get. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a blackboard that can be posted. They, they're actually much more um, environmentally friendly than they okay. used to be. There's not too many notices that come home. But I know that mm -hmm. our, our neighbors are, you know, just on Facebook and they send, you know, these blasts out all the time yeah. relative to, and, and it's amazing how many how many people are hit that way. Yeah. So I maybe we just need to think about that. You might want to talk to Brian Fourier. Uh, he's pretty responsive in getting the word out to high school students at least. Okay. Well, well actually to the whole to the whole district. They yeah. could do it district wide. Well, <coughs> at least the Newbury. To Newbury, that yeah, would be Triton that. Regional High and Newbury yep. Elementary. Yep. 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 We had a high school student for a while on our high school building committee. Did you? That's good. Back about 10 or 12 years ago. <coughs> Anything further on this from anyone on the master plan? Where we go with it? Okay, uh, the next item is the next Tuesday, which is, I assume, why you three are here, uh, the, re the selectmen take a look at the Borrego solar reapplication. Livingston oh. Lane. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm so oh, I have my old. I'm sorry. Livingston Lane. I have. I have, the, I have the old. <coughs> uh, uh, let me. Could I just see that? Sure. I didn't get a, a new one. 
Um, so Livingston Lane update. Uh, Martha, I think you've got that. Um, yes, I've had a uh, conversation with, uh, with John Roush, the developer, and originally he had been hoping to um, have acceptance of the road on the warrant for the spring town meeting. Yes. Um, but uh, he and I both agreed the snow cover is still there on the sidewalks. It's probably going to take some time for it to go away. <coughs> um, and um, as part of the process, the planning board actually needs to approve the road and the sidewalk and release the performance guarantee before it can be accepted mm -hmm. by the road. So a uh, long way of saying that he's going to aim for the fall. He has put the request into the selectmen. Um, I'm going to go out at the end of next week and see how it looks. I've already talked to, to Jane Surratt, our new DPW director, um, about the process and getting out there to inspect it. Um, our engineer has reviewed the as-builds, um, requested some corrections from Hayes Engineering, and the street acceptance plan still needs to be done. So it's in process, but it's not going to be on the warrant until the fall. I'm sorry, as usual, I missed the first sentence. Where are we talking about? Livingston Lane. Oh, Livingston Lane. Yeah. Scotland Woods, John yeah. Rush. Yeah. I thought that was already. Well, we said we'd wait until. Spring. We were we'd, holding. We'd, we'd oh, wait, we were wait until the winter. Yeah. We'd wait until the winter and see what the winter did to everything. Ah, and okay. we knew that there were some sidewalk repairs that needed to be done. Yeah. And some other things that Scott thought might be trouble yeah, issues. Yeah. Uh, Tim wanted, there was a minor repair to yeah. a sidewalk, yeah. as I recall. <coughs> yeah. That Jim wanted to see right. happen, and then you know, see how the top coat got through the winter. Yeah. So that's where it stands. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. Now Could I add one other thing on old business? Yeah. Martha, could you pull out the progress intended progress schedule for Angelo's project on 101 Newbury Park <laughs> Turnpike? I just want to see early on if there are going to be any changes made. And that's something that might be worthwhile being discussed. So you just want to take a look. I think take that a look at I had mentioned this discussion. to Martha about two weeks ago, and her comment was, well, he's supposed to come in with an update in July or June or something like that. I'd like to take a look at it earlier. I'll put that on, <laughs> I'll put, I'll put that on for next time. Thank time. you. Because there really has been no progress since November. He, he really can't. His next move, as I recall, is the masonry. Yeah. And we'd got to wait for winter. You can't do masonry unless it's 40 degrees r and rising. Yeah. So we haven't had much of that. So my guess is we'll, yeah. you might want to wait until April. No, you might want to extend The it. other thing uh, that concerns me, I'd like to, they're, the engineer that's representing Angelo to the Conservation Commission is the same one that designed it. Alan uh, is back. Now he's no longer with Hancock. He's with uh, uh, Woody Kamet's office. But I'd like to see some sort of an undertaking from him that the excavation has done has been done to the extent that all of the BMPs can indeed be built as planned. Um, that excavation is probably ha at least half of it is through a ledge. Yeah, and uh, it wouldn't. It would be good to get it. If it needs to be fixed, it will make more sense to fix it before he has masonry walls up 10 or 15 feet away from the blasting or the hole ramming, however he chooses to remove the ledge. So Martha, do you want to just maybe get us the schedule yep. and see how both these comments fit in with that? Well, I, I'm not sure if it's us or it's CONCOM uh, that needs to make that thing on the drainage your call. I don't. I don't care. Somehow he needs to be told to get his engineer out That's there right. and verify that he can indeed build without further rock pounding or rock blasting. Um, I mean, maybe I could talk to Doug about it and see. Um. Yeah, I'll mention it the next time I okay. next time I see him. I just thought about it today. I've been thinking about it periodically, but you know, it just came up now and I bingo. Time to mention it. Okay. Now. <laughs> what is Borrego Solar? So I think that how we're going to handle this is that, I don't know, did you get a copy of the letter that the board sent to the Board of Selectmen about, well, August 25th, 
for both projects by any chance? Yeah. No. Um, so what like we're copy right now? Would you like a copy? I'll give you a copy right, right now. Or would you, both of you? I'm, I think I. There you go. Thank you. And would you like one? Yes, sir. I have one. I have an extra, I think. So, ah, yeah, hold on. So, what we're going to do is go through this letter and use this as our guide in determining to what extent the issues that we raise then have either been addressed or not addressed, or are there other kind of issues uh, that we find from looking at the most recent application that they've made. Okay? Is that all right with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so this allows you then to read through with us as we, as we go through this. And so let me just, uh, this was when uh, Borrego came in with both 8 Middle Road and 136 Main Street. And we reviewed it from the perspective, we had been asked by the Board of Selectmen as the planning board to review uh, the planning issues uh, relative to the site plan approval, or excuse me, to the special permit approval that uh, uh, they were about to make. Uh, and advise them about any issues that we um, wanted to bring to their attention. So that's what this letter is about. So let me go through and um, do you have yours, Jan? Yeah, okay. So the general comments for both projects, um, the board, meaning the planning board, recommends that no special permit be granted until the financial arrangements between the town and Borrego for each project is finalized to the satisfaction of the town administrator. Did that ever happen? Well, it, it, I, I, we just talked to Michelle um, yesterday, and um, I think that it happened, but I don't know if it is in stone. I don't know if it's an agreement that has been signed. Do, do you know? I don't know if it's actually been signed. I know that it was, an agreement was reached, at least for the Middle Road project. I don't know if that also applied to this project. Okay. I know that I was hearing public officials screaming foul at some stage that there weren't too many happy campers <coughs> in the assessor's office or the administrator's office at one point. Well, it went through a few iterations. Right. Um, you know, it seemed an agreement yeah. had been reached and then... Yeah, yes turned into no overnight, sort of. Well, so we, we don't know uh, uh, okay. if... That should uh, st that definitely stay, stay in. Public well... <coughs> Um, it's not between us, so it's the uh, town administrator makes the agreement, and uh, I would imagine it would be public. I, I just I imagine so. has to. Be. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a tax agreement. Uh, our our position our position is that this is land that could be used for another purpose, and that it ought not to be tax free, and that the town ought to get a return for uh, that, just as the property owner is getting a return on his investment. So, so that we think that that's an outstanding issue, right? So that's, that would still stay in. So if we would redo this letter, that would stay in there. Okay. Uh, B, more information should be included in the operations and maintenance plan provided in Appendix A of each application. Uh, the plan should, in, should and this is in quotes, include measures for maintaining safe access to the, in, to the installation stormwater controls as well as general procedures for operational maintenance of the installation. So that's from, from the uh, bylaw. So what do you say here? Site inspection, do I, I don't? Oh, so, I'm sorry, site inspection protocol and the sample O&M um, don't appear to cover that particular aspect. So the, o, the, uh, uh, the uh, operation and maintenance agreement that's in the new submission does not seem to, to uh, do that. So we would, we would say we don't think that's been met, okay? Uh, C, a performance bond for each project is required. And our comment here is the value of performance bond, we have not figured out what the value is. So I... Yeah, I've got an issue. I think it's covered, <coughs> covered further on. I have an issue with what constitutes a professional estimator. 
I think there's two things here. Yeah, the just, first is the, the performance bond. The second is the estimate, estimation of decommissioning. Yeah. And the only thing we have a certification on from their, their engineer, engineer is yeah. of the decommissioning. And he estimates at $81,000 in 20 years. Yeah. And so we, we will hold to our position, I think, that we want an independent third party. Absolutely, yeah. And a, you know, I am one. A professional engineer does not make a professional estimator. I have done a lot of estimating in my life professionally, but I've never considered myself a professional estimator because those are people that do it all the time and have done it for a number of years. And I haven't seen those, you know, right. qualifications from Steve. <clears throat> no, I mean, he, may, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sure he knows what he's doing, but that's not the point. He, he works for the company. He works for the company. Well, and what he's doing is self-serving. I mean, so, what he's doing is self-serving. Right. Well, it could I just be. think we need it, an It's exposed person. to being right. uh, uh, looked that way. And frankly, my, my own feeling is that's too damn low. I mean, he's got a situation where nobody, it never rains, nobody ever has to go to the bathroom. You know, it's, everything goes exactly the way it's supposed to. That's not, way, that's not the way construction jobs go. In one of our requests we, for next week, we would be asking for an independent review of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, I not think. Not just from Vallejo, because quite frankly, most of the things that we have reviewed with a professional person, their estimates have been completely flawed. You know, I, um, I, I, I want to be careful because we'd like to get your comments, but if you want to make comments, yeah, you, you, have to, to you have to, you have also, it's better to use the mic, oh, okay. use the mic otherwise you, it doesn't, it's not recorded. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, you can go ahead and do it. Just, you can. We want you to be recorded. Why, why don't you get up and say that? Okay. And then, because I have a question of you about that, exactly okay. what that is. And now, state some your. Some people that know me would not think that I'm shy, but I'm pretty shy when it comes state, to State state your name I'm and Jean address. Carthy and I live at Courtney Drive in Byfield, and uh, my husband and I have lived there for 18 years and raised our family there. We just we just love our home and our our community okay. very much. Okay. And uh, last July, when we got the first uh, certified mail, we were kind of shocked that it came. This was a solar power plant in our backyard, and um, you know. We weren't against solar. One of our neighbors has it on his roof. We applaud him. We actually started looking into it ourselves. And um, soon after that first meeting that we came here, there was an outside meeting, and one of the elected officials um, introduced himself to me and kind of put his finger right in my face and said, you don't know what you're talking about. And this chapter law, there's laws, and you need to do your research, and you need to do your homework. This is going to go through. And it was a very uh, forceful first greet and meet as, as a resident. So guess what? I've done the homework and I've sat there very quietly for many months trying to listen and be very equal and fair. But uh, we've done a lot of research, Courtney Drive did, and um, there's a lot of flaws in Borrego's application and uh, we've had independent people look at the stormwater management. There's lots of issues with that and there's lots of issues in their <coughs> application. The first one that they said that they were going to do, and the second one came back, and still errors and miscalculations, quantity counts are completely wrong. Um, distance from property to the site has been measured wrong. So there's a multitude of issues that um, we need to address. Uh, I would like to just add one other thing, if I could read something that I, that I wrote up. As a community, we believe large-scale industrial solar installations are a form of land use. Citing these industri industrial installation in zone residential agricultural district is not the least bit appropriate. They should be correctly cited in business light industrial districts. The 136 Main Street project currently before the Board of Selectmen is an industrial large-scale solar power plant <coughs> attempting to bypass the current Town of Newbury zoning bylaws under the guise of Chapter 40A. No zoning ordinance or bylaw should prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Citing this large scale industrial power plant in close proximity to resident dwellings will threaten the peaceful enjoyment of our residential homes. 
we value the surrounding properties and forever change the landscape of the town of Newburgh. To correctly place the industrial installation in a business light industrial district is not an unreasonable regulation. The issue facing Newbury is not a solar issue, but a land use issue. Zoning laws exist for a reason. Our expectation is that we are protected from the inappropriate siting of a power plant that's less than 150 feet from our property lines. The solar bylaw in the town of Newbury should only allow industrial large scale installations in zone industrial districts. And I back that up with talking with the former governor's office, the current <coughs> governor's office, the Department of Energy. I've talked to them many times. I've been in there. I've got information for them that I'd like to pass out with you that corresponds to the large scale. They're not in favor. The SREF 2 and the managed growth money is not in favor, and they will publicly say that. They're not in favor of putting large scale mounted solar arrays in this type of land. They're looking to do it in brownfields, schools, town owned land. They're not in favor of this. And moving forward, there will be no funds for this. And I don't think that Newbury should be one of those towns that does something that will be a mistake. And I, I'll, I'll pass out this okay. information. Thank you. I appreciate I it. I have one comment. <coughs> that, sure. uh, you're going to hear on Tuesday night because I'm planning on speaking as a private citizen. Um, the one comment is relative to the stormwater. There are, to the best of my knowledge, quite a few open uh, wetlands issues, okay? Not the same as stormwater management. The stormwater management issue, I believe, was the fact that, that some people were perceiving that constructed project as impervious surface. Now, Phil's position, Phil, you're talking about Phil Christensen, who provided that report. Yeah, I know. I've known Phil forever, and he's, he's a friend of mine. And I, out of courtesy, I called him and said, hey, Phil, I'm going to get up and disagree with you, okay? Um, I agree with what he said. If DEP had not already, in two separate documents, one that the applicant quoted and another one that apparently he never found, because it says the same thing there. You might find th things differently from them. I'm sorry? You probably will see things differently next Tuesday with a report from both of those departments. Both of those departments? The, de the departments. So the oh, state, okay. state agencies. Well, if, if, <coughs> if they have changed their mind, all I know is what I read. And if they have uh, come back with a different approach, I'm all ears. But that's what it says right now. And you know what Phil's position makes all the sense of the world if it, DEP hadn't already said what they have said. But if they have changed their mind and you have another report, then obviously DEP makes the rules. They do, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. No, I, I took that accusation last for, uh, summer from a board member very seriously. I have done my homework. I have done a lot of research. I've left the town. I've gone to the state level. I've talked to state representatives, the DEP. We as a group on Portland Drive, you know, we want to make sure that this is appropriately yeah. cited and it's not for our backyard. Done. Okay. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. Uh, you and Alicia have mentioned brownfield sites pretty regularly. Yes. Do you know of any brownfield site in Newbury? Well, the one that the state was talking to, and I think it was a, a selectman that had mentioned that he was really researching back to the, the dump, the town owned dump. Right. And right. that. that as we talk to him more and more, it looks like that there could be a possibility that it's a very <coughs> uh, possible, uh, possible place for your... Yeah. Well, that's been looked at before. Yeah, it was looked at before and found wanting. However, I think there's interest in looking at it again. There is, and just technologies have changed. The technology has changed to make that there was actually a, feasible. You know, they, they did look at it three or four years ago, and they, the conclusion wasn't, wasn't at all positive, but it may be positive now it certainly makes sense to look right. there all right and triton and i don't know about newbury um elementary, elementary school but hopefully there will be other areas right so, so where we are is that uh we're under the existing zoning and so we're still going to comment based on it's an allowed use yes. do, do you see and so but there are strictures that if it ever if the if the Board of Selectmen choose to decide this way, that these are the strictures that we want on the project. That okay. we would recommend to them. Okay? Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thank you. 
So um, a performance bond. Second, liability insurance. And Martha notes that the liability policy expires on April 1st. So we would need proof that it is going to be extended. An open space and agricultural impact report is required. And that, yes, when I went through the re their application, it, they say, well, we've looked at it, but there's no agricultural or open space impact report. Yeah, it's, it's all kind of in the body of <clears throat> Right. So, so they really didn't do a separate uh, open space or agricultural impact report, so we'll note that. In they kind of decided what they would respond to and what they wouldn't, right. which wasn't really their decision. Yeah. Um, okay, now, and this is actually an, an important one. Uh, the entire project site, this is what the ordinance requires. The entire project site should be screened at all seasons of the year from the view of adjacent residential lots and streets and roadways. So one of the bits of data that we note here is that there are, according to their most recent proposal, they would remove 2,296 trees of six inch caliber or larger. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to stand here in case I have a question. Okay. That um, they are going, they're planning on planting 31 Colorado blue spruce at uh, 10 to 12 feet for a distance of about 450 linear feet uh, closest to the house that's on the um, cul-de-sac. So I I must admit that I took a look at that and I said, well, that doesn't look like a screen to me. That's, you that know. doesn't look like a deal, no. <laughs> so I think I've that. I've been offered deals like that. You know, but never, never and, and uh, basically I did, did some research because I have a couple of Colorado blue spruces and they grow very slowly. One inch per year. No, no, I've got, no, I, no, they can go between 12 and 24 depending on the species. So I gave them 18. And even at 18, it would take 20 years to have a substantial screen. So the point is that the, 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 point, the point is that w the day that the project starts, there's not a screen. You know, uh, uh, so that's a concern that we have. And on the plans, the new plans, they show uh, a gentleman on one of their architectural pages, and he's six feet tall, and he's looking for the cross. He's on the ground level. We don't live on the ground. We live <coughs> in our homes. Right. And some of us have three levels. Right. My entire back of my house, and I've taken pictures in every season, and I can see exactly where this is going. And I deny that, but I welcome people to come to my home. Right. I would like a visual study done. And um, the, the, the trees that he's talking about is, is just a small portion of this solar array. I'm not sure why they think that's going to do any screening at all. And um, um, I, so that I, six foot man doesn't live on, <coughs> on in our first floor, our second floor, or our third floor, where we have all back windows. And you have to, you know, add that height to the view, and there'll be zero screening. We we well. Another thing, the state. When I talked to um, the DOER, they felt very strongly that solar companies have come to the state and are manipulating, and that word was used seven times in our conversation of an hour, manipulating the rules and regulations to get what they want. And we're not gonna let that happen. And there are ways to manipulate to make things happen in their presentations, but we're here to change that. Okay. <coughs> Item G. Uh, access roadways should be maintained year-round, including snow removal in winter, and we think that their plan actually says that's okay? No. 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 I think they're still... No. They're at, the last, at the last meeting <coughs> with the uh, Board of Selectmen on the prior project, they said we do not plan to plow snow in the winter. Uh, there will not be year-round access. Okay. So we only have to get in there s two times a year to cut grass and so on. So. This is an outstanding issue. Yeah, that's what I meant by that. And that has to be dealt with the police chief. We ought to be chief. asking Nate, to, well, somebody will ask Nate to ring in on that. He wasn't um, involved, Billy yes. was at the time. Okay. But now we've got a new fire chief, and he may or may not. That, but, that was my next comment oh, as okay. well. That <laughs> on the next one, the applicant should provide letters from the fire chief and police chief. We have them 
but we have a new fire chief, so we need to yeah. ha have him take a look. A practical matter, I think those letters were gotten from the chief before it was known that the roads would not be kept open. I don't know. That, that may be. I, I think be. that may be the case. Okay. Uh, cost estimates for decommissioning. This is what we just talked about. Yeah. That we need to have a, a respectable, well, yeah. reasonable third party do yeah. that. I think um, I, I had a, <coughs> quite a discussion with Lisa on that. She may not quite agree with what I just said. Um, that I know Tracy, too, was, was somewhat willing to accept uh, a professional engineer as a professional estimator since we didn't say that he couldn't be a member of the firm. Right, but we do say that it should, he should be reasonably acceptable to the town. Yeah. So, I mean, there is some... There's, there's some leverage there. Yeah. I'm just mentioning yep, that. Yep. I'm not arguing against yep, it. No, I, I very much do not want to accept the estimates as they are. Per 97.5 F12D, security fencing should be black vinyl coated, chain link fencing a minimum of eight feet high, and the drawings show six foot high chain link fence. Although I've, uh, yeah, it says that they changed it to eight. To eight, they changed yes. it to eight, but the cross section that Gene was just talking about still shows six, yeah. so there are discrepancies. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, we need to revised plans dated 8 6 14 show grading for both projects. However, planting, including screening and light and site lighting, should be shown per 97.5 lighting specs. I thought the lighting specs were quite poor. Um, basically, it's two spotlights that are kind of going out in a direction like that instead of the, when, when you read the document, it says it's downward facing lighting, yeah. and it's not at all. So the, the lighting specs are, need, some, need some work. All right, so Middle Road, we'll skip over now, and we go to the, just the details of Main Street. And here we talk about 11 acres of trees will be removed from the project. As noted above, this tree removal is not in compliance with Newbury's bylaw, the state's model bylaw, and the state's solar installation guidelines. The state encourages the construction of large-scale solar PV installations on already disturbed land not on forested land. Per Newbury's bylaw, the S special permit granting authority may require that the applicant replace any trees with a caliber six inches or greater that are removed for the project. And what measures does the applicant propose to mitigate the impact of this tree removal? So what they say in the thing is that they're going to do these live, what's it like, uh, bare root, I guess you call it. Is that what that is? Three foot high stakes? At, at decommissioning, right. Right? right? At decommissioning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm. So Checks in the mail. Yeah. So Is that part of that 81,000? No. That no, it's not. No. 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 Separate. 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 Separate items. Well, there were several hundred <coughs> six caliber trees, as I recollect. Yeah. Well, there are 2,200. Yeah, there are 2,200 yeah. over Here. six inches. But in the last project, it was roughly 800, I think. Yeah. And as a result, there was a final offer of small money to the town's tree fund. And that was accepted. Yeah. And how did they um, get to the comp? Was anybody from the town here verifying it? Was it I don't know. tape, film? I don't know, but 2296 is probably, that's a lot of trees. It's, it covers 16 acres, though. Yeah, so I, the answer is I don't know. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Google Earth that property? <clears throat> what you could do is take an acre, I guess, or somebody could go out and verify an acre and see what that is and, and you just know, so extrapolate and then extrapolate from that. Using 16 acres. So I'm, I'm just, as a community, I don't know how they came up with their count. But it would well, be clear, clearing 10, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't think it's 16. But, it, you know, I haven't looked, but I think it was 10 it's acres 10 of clearing. Acres, um, numbers that they use for clearing? I, we just want verification on, on okay. what they're going to use. For okay. Okay. And, 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 and so you just put that forward. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, and then B, since the applicant is requesting a significant waiver regarding tree removal from this project, he should be prepared to address the concerns of the Courtney Drive residents with regard to visual and acoustical screening, including planting a significant number of appropriate trees and or shrubs in locations acceptable to the residents. So that's what we said. And so we don't think that they've done that uh, in the plan. And then finally, uh, uh, Conservation Commission and DEP concerns regarding this site should be satisfied prior to the issuance of a special permit. So those are our concerns. Do we want to add 
Uh, we've got some adjustments to them. Do we want to redo this and come up with a new letter? I would think so. Yes. I think so. Yeah, based yes. on the current so I think that based on the current application, we've, re we've looked at our, our prior um, letter and we're adjusting it accordingly. So why don't we, maybe you and I can work on it tomorrow. It should be sent to them as soon as possible. I don't want to deliver it on Tuesday. No, it did, yeah, it should have it in hand. So why don't we work on that tomorrow? Okay. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? We'll do that. Yes. yes I think we have a mm -hmm. further comment. Okay. Hi. Um, Name. Name. Rick, Rick Morin. I live at Four Fourteen Drive. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll just show you a picture of my house. Very nice. <laughs> um, oh. I have uh, solar guy. Thirty-six solar panels on my roof. Uh, peak output at nine point nine kilowatts. None of which I installed at my own expense last year. Um, the people uh, who are my neighbors uh, had no objection whatsoever to my installing this, feeling that it was an appropriate application of solar in a residence. Um, the commercial uh, production of power in a residential zone, in a residential area, is very um, concerning to me, not just as a resident of Courtney Drive, but as a as a resident of this town. Um, when I first moved into Courtney Drive, the original name, if you recall, those of you who were around when it came out in uh, 96, was uh, North Woods at Byfield. And it looks like there is a plan underway to eliminate a whole lot of the woods that was uh, the North Woods that I moved into. Um, I have a document here from DOER, which is uh, guidance. I'm sure you've all seen it, guidance on uh, on permitting and siting of the uh, of ground mounted solar arrays. And it does uh, say that DOER uh, strongly discourages locations that result in significant loss uh, of land and natural resources, including uh, farm and forest land, and encourages rooftop uh, sitting, siting as well as locations in industrial and commercial districts or in vacant, disturbed land. Significant tree cutting is problematic because of the important water management, cooling, and climate benefits the trees provide. Um, and this is straight from DOER. It's, it's right from the state. So um, I, I think that there is a, uh, a great um, opportunity here for the intent of the initiative of the state of Massachusetts to encourage solar. Uh, I think there's, there's an opportunity here for it to be misinterpreted as a sort of a cotte blanche and, and just a, an opportunity for uh, people interested in, in making a profit to come in, change the character of our neighborhood, change the character of our community um, in the interest of money. And, um, and, we're, and we, the people who intend to live here for the rest of our lives, um, are the ones who are going to ultimately suffer for it. Um, there was also um, some mention earlier of whether it's an impervious surface, et cetera, et cetera. And this same document, the DOER, uh, references that as well. And they do <coughs> say that regardless of definition, it's recommended that solar energy systems with grass or another pervious surface under them be exempted from lock coverage or impervious surface calculations. That is only for lock coverage, okay? So it, it further says it's also important to note that this recommended exemption is not intended to apply to municipal stormwater regulations as the panels could have an effect on altering the volume, velocity, and discharge pattern of stormwater runoff. So again, uh, I've been in conservation commission meeting, I've been in uh, board of selectmen meeting. Every time they say, oh no, no, this is a pervious surface. It's, it's not a pervious surface. <laughs> it's, it's a per it's, it's, um, it is exempted from impervious surface restrictions as it pertains to lot coverage, but not as it pertains, pertains to stormwater runoff. So it, it's just saying uh, outright that it's, it's a uh, pervious surface is not correct. <coughs> um, the other thing that I find very uh, concerning, and this document is a different document from, uh, this is the uh, policy guidance for regulating uh, solar energy systems. Uh, and this is also from DOER, is that it says here that um, uh, the second paragraph of Section 9D provides the ability uh, to use special permit process to impose restrictions on neighboring properties for the purpose of protecting access to sunlight. Uh, this 
establishes an involuntary easement. And that concerns me greatly. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the fact that we can't estimate, there's no history to say that this thing being in our neighborhood is gonna uh, lower our property values. I can tell you what does lower property values and saleability is any kind of an easement on a property. And if Borrego goes <coughs> in there, puts up their, their uh, solar facility, and now they tell me I can't put a third floor on my house because it's going to block the sunlight. Or I can't plant trees because they didn't screen it. I want to hide the solar panels. I can't do that on my property because they have an easement because they're a, a solar uh, energy producer. That's very disconcerting to me. And, uh, and it's, it sounds, this whole thing just smacks of slippery slope. Uh, they, they come in uh, with their hat in their hand and we're going to do this and we're going to be wonderful neighbors and everything else. And pretty soon they're calling the shots in my neighborhood. So th those are my major concerns. Um, I, I've been living in, in this town since 1997. Love it here, love the character of the town. Uh, we like the character of the town. Obviously the, the town needs to have development of some sort in some uh, sectors. I don't think this is appropriate. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Time. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> Any comments from the board on this, except for that we're going <coughs> to redo the letter? Redo the letter. I would say that if you took a look at the zoning map of the entire town, the vast majority of this town is agricultural residential. Uh, the industrial commercial areas are very small. Uh, if we tried to restrict a raise just to those areas, for example, there may not be enough land together for a, a large array. And if we did that, the Attorney General's office might well say you're trying to prohibit solar activity in the entire town. That's something that we ran into early on. Some towns just said we want to prohibit it in Reading, for example, that's what they tried. And the Attorney General's office said you can't do that. You have to allow them someplace that's reasonable where they can actually put up facilities. So that was the state telling the towns and the cities what they had to do. And that really hasn't changed. <coughs> I, I think well, that might have changed a little bit. I hope so. <laughs> there has been new rulings, and we've been working with mm -hmm. them and talking with them uh, upon several occasions between them writing them, and, and actually the new one has just come out recently. Okay. So I, I hope that we, we get to Do you know what that. that is? Can you share it with us? Or? I, I don't have it. <coughs> oh, okay. Right but there was a, I, I, I can give you a copy that I had in Hatfield, Mass, there was, in January, there was a state land court judge that ruled against this specifically for that reason. Mm -hmm. And I will give you a copy of that. Okay, that'd be for, good. For the reason that it, it was exclusionary? Yes. I see. I have that for okay, you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. John? I need to look into the stormwater aspects of that thing more. Yeah, that was interesting. I'm not, I'm not reading it the way you're reading it, but that doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just saying this is what I think. <laughs> um, right. No guarantee that I'm right. But uh, I don't see the way it's configured. Um, there could be a raise that would cause a lot of erosion. This, I, in my opinion, isn't going to be that kind of an array. But again, I'll, I'll look into it some more. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There, there was there was one other thing I wanted to ask. If we're going to require, if the town is going, to, and I say we, <laughs> if the town is going to require that um, that they keep that road open in the winter, has anybody looked at um, chemical application to to uh, melt the ice and what the effect that might be on the surrounding wetlands? I don't. I don't and think so. Need to, I, I'm sure no one's looked at that. Finding on that yeah. Or con or yeah. Frankly, I don't see that situation one where anybody would be interested in having uh, salt put on it. Uh, I don't think that's really a requirement in that circumstance. A public road where there's heavy <coughs> traffic, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, but if, when you have one fire truck every 15 years, I'm not sure that's worth. That would be my opinion. And I would be concerned if they were uh, dumping sodium chloride in the um, when you said that about the town the state mm -hmm. I mean we we are putting an appropriately cited one on middle road yep and hopefully we'll be looking at to the to the uh, dump 
and maybe the schools? How many, is there a quantity that you think that is acceptable to the state or not acceptable to the state? That's not really for us to determine. <coughs> right, Excuse me. The town of Newbury has already mm -hmm. passed one in Middle Road mm -hmm. and it, it is happening. So it, it's not like as a town, we're not against solar arrays. We but just want it, them appropriately cited. Right, but as a practical matter, we can't say that's enough. I mean, we could find a farm up on off a high road and somebody would say, that's a great place to put it. Then three years later, somebody wants to put a subdivision next to it, and they'll say that that solar array is too close to us. There's, there's a balance in there someplace. I don't know where it is, but the town really can't control the issue totally because you have to deal with the state. Okay, thank you. Just one, one more thing. I, I don't mean to keep you, but um, I visited some friends recently in Osterville, and um, they have a capped landfill in Osterville that they've totally covered with solar panels. And, and that, that to me is an appropriate use. I've seen the, the Rabbit Road site. That to me is, a, is an appropriate use. So I think we, we have to have to keep in mind that, you know, the, 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 uh, the pre percept of, of, of a, a pro an appropriate use uh, of the land um, and, and I don't, just don't feel that this particular siting is appropriate. Yeah. Okay. The landfill is agricultural residential, though. You know, it's, it is so zoned. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yeah. No. I think there's a lot of agricultural residentially zoned land in town where there isn't a soul would object to a solar. Uh, so I don't think that is the right criteria to use. Uh, right next to a residential, I can see your point. But uh, in, in zone, using the zoning, the current zoning, I don't, I don't buy that personally. Okay. All right. So we're done with this, and we're on to liaison reports. Board of Selectmen. Well, hearing next week. I know. <coughs> MVPC doesn't meet until tomorrow night, so we, we have nothing. They Except are. You uh, did, they're you running did do an MS4. That that, that, just, that set of three workshops. So we went to the first one, and even the least enthusiastic of my volunteers thought it was great. Really? Yeah. It was. Uh, it got good reviews. Well, that's good to hear. That is good to hear. No, I, I've. I think I've. From what I've heard, all the things that they've run so far have been pretty good. Um, um, just one other note on MVPC. Uh, just an update on the hazard mitigation plan. Our local team is going to be meeting on the 30th. <coughs> might come up uh, on. Well, on actually, the there's a presentation right. tomorrow night. Right. Are you going to? Yeah. Do you want to go? Um, or I mean, not unless you want to. <laughs> Where is the <laughs> presentation? Uh, at MVPC at tomorrow office. night oh, at seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah, they actually had a public hearing, I think, on March 6th, which I missed, so it's probably going right. to be a, a similar. This is a state guy talking about, I think, the plan that they're, that is a regional plan, but we, we have our own plan. Um, well, our own plan is part of the regional plan that they're, that they're doing. Fourteen communities are covered by it, so I think that's what they're going to be presenting tomorrow night. I think they want approval of it. And I think they want approval from the commissioners. <coughs> they also want approval from our local hazard mitigation team. Who's on our local hazard mitigation team? Um, it's um, I am uh, Doug, Sam, Fire Chief, Police Chief. We, 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 who, agent, who I would expect. Yeah, yeah. Right. The usual and suspects. And yeah. Yeah. Usual suspects. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so anyway, that, that might be interesting. But if you do want to go, let me know and we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Um, con, con? Um, nothing much. The meeting last night was the shortest one in a while. Uh, both public hearings bailed. And so oh, yeah. Nothing much to say. And ZBA? As you know, I showed up for 7 o'clock meeting, which was actually sketch, uh, scheduled for 7.30, and I left at 7.20. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was scheduled for 7.30. <laughs> so, um, with that, I... I um, I'll ask for a uh, motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.